Hi, <coughs> my name is Ralph Dewey Harris, and I'm a knife maker. I've been making knives now for over 20 years. Uh, I started back in the Panama Canal Zone, and I made fixed blade knives for probably 15 of the 20 plus years. Speak up a little louder. I now make <coughs> primarily uh, folders and automatics. And <coughs> I have here one of my automatics that I copied from. <coughs> knife maker named Jim Servant. There were three knife makers <coughs> besides myself that made this particular design. Thank you. Uh, Judy Goddage, Jim Servant, and Chuck Stewart. Chuck Stewart passed away. Judy Goddard retired from knife making, and then Jim Servant retired from knife making. So I'm the only one left who makes this particular design. This particular knife is not that much different <clears throat> from uh, other knives I make, except it has a lever which lifts the locking bar out of the notch and allows the blade to close. And that same lever lifts the bar out of the notch which allows the blade to open. I use a pantograph mill to mill the, out, the cavity for the inlay and also to mill the inlay. I use that same pantograph mill to mill the cavity for the lever and the lever. Other than that, uh, there's a, I have a surface grinder that I use to flatten out my handle frames and a belt grinder that I use for doing all the finish work and grinding the blade. Uh, as far as the engraving goes, I use a Graver Max, which is actually it's an air-powered handpiece. I have a foot throttle that controls the pressure, the uh, power of the handpiece. It probably takes me a week to make the knife and another three or four days to engrave it. interested in, engrave, in engraving back I guess it was in the 80s and I even went so far as to buy myself a chaser's hammer and uh, some chisels and I experimented for a while and I realized 
that it would take me many years to become proficient using the chaser's hammer. And so I just kind of forgot about it for quite some time. And then I had a particularly good blade show. And at that show, I uh, visited the Glendo booth. And I decided that the way to go was with the uh, pneumatic handpiece and their machinery. And so I did. And I bought all the books that I could find on engraving and just started putting the chisel to the steel. And it took me about a month of practicing anywhere from two to four hours a day before I felt confident enough to put some engraving on a knife that I was going to take to a show. And I realized <clears throat> after that that uh, I needed to see better. And optivizers <clears throat> didn't quite cut the mustard and resulted in eye strain and subsequent headaches. So I bought a Miji microscope, also from Glendo. And that really open the door for fine engraving. I started making knives <clears throat> when I was employed by the Panama Canal Company in Panama. And they weren't great knives, they were functional, a little on the crude side and I was the, to my knowledge, the only custom knife maker in Central America. I retired from the Panama Canal Company in 1982 and moved to Grovetown, Georgia. And I continued my knife making there. And when my <clears throat> primary source of income, besides my retirement, that is, uh, went defunct, I relied on my knives to provide a supplemental income. And I made hunting knives, I made fighting knives. I used to say, if it could cut, I, I could make it. But as the years wore on, I began to specialize and I started making folders. And of course then, switchblades and at that time there were only three or four guild members who made switchblades. Now of course there are dozens but I found switchblades to be fascinating and fortunately in 
the state of Florida and also in the state of Georgia, switchblades were legal. So I had no problem with the laws. And I'm, I hope to be able to continue to make knives for many years to come. Thank you.